Hi, I'm Pavel Schukman, DevOps professional and co-founder of Realizer. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate key capabilities of Realizer Hub. Realizer Hub is a DevOps metadata management system that stores metadata about releases, artifacts, and deployments all in one place. We will now go to Realizer Hub Playground, which would generate some sample data for us. We need to agree to cookie terms, and now we're in our playground. No additional registration is needed. As you can see, we have a couple of more projects set up for us, a product, and a few instances. First, let's very quickly discuss terminology. In our world, project is anything that maps to source code, and product is something that is customer facing and may consist of one or more projects. Essentially, Developers usually think in terms of projects, while marketing and business people think in terms of products. As you can see, our mock projects and products already have versioning schemas assigned to them, and there are a few pre-created releases. I'm now going to demonstrate how to create a release for our project. And simplest way to do so is manual. We just need to click the add release icon in the branch menu and as you can see the tool automatically generates next release version for us based on versioning schema defined for the project at this time i'm not going to add source code entry or artifacts and i just click submit and you can see the new release is now created for us that was cool However, since we are DevOps people, manual way is not good enough. Let me now show how we can automate this process and integrate into our CI system. To demonstrate this, we created a sample repository in GitHub, which you can see here. Notice that this repository is a monorepo and it has uh, some mock backend project inside and then some mock UI and then some sample scripts and documentation. So let me now fork this repository. And now what uh, we have here is we have a sample GitHub Actions script, uh, which uh, we created. And the first thing we need to set up some secrets, which would come from our playground. Set up secrets, let's uh, first of all check what are the names of the secrets that are used here. So in our GitHub Actions YAML script, we have uh, backend uh, IPI ID, backend IPI key, and then down below we have uh, UI IPI ID and UI project API key. So let's start with backend. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to our Realize a Hub playground to our backend project and then click on this log icon to generate project API key. Uh, now back to GitHub Actions. Here we need to go to Settings. I'm just opening it in New Tab. And in Settings we go to Secrets. And here we click Add a New Secret. So we take the name from uh, here, which would be Backend API ID. Uh, and the value we take from our playground. So the new secret is created. We'll now create one more for the key. So again, name from our script and value from playground. And now same thing for UI project. So the name for our UI project is here. And now we go to our UI project and also generate secrets. So this would be ID. And finally, we get our project key. So it's a little bit tedious, but it's a one-time thing operation. Okay, so now all our secrets are done uh, and uh, 
last thing we need to do is to enable GitHub Actions because it's a Ford project. I need to confirm that I understand what GitHub Actions would do. Okay, cool. So now this is enabled. Uh, so finally, to in initiate GitHub Actions, I need to check in something. So let me go to Backend Project and uh, create some file. So I'll say test Eliza Playground Integration TXT. I'll say test integration. Okay, let's commit. commit this so this presumably should start our action let me go to actions so I skipped a little bit of time in the video as you can see now we have uh, this workflow that completed for my commit so we can inspect it from here from github that everything is completed now let's go to our playground and go to our backend project and voila, we have a new release here which was fully automated and created from this GitHub Actions executions. A uh, nice thing about it is that for UI project, even though it's monorepo, we don't have a new release. Uh, this is because how code is uh, organized in our yaml file you can investigate later in github but basic idea is that here we compute uh, sha 256 digest on our project and if it didn't change between releases and again we know it because we're pulling realize a hub we're not creating new version for the project which did not change and we only create a version for project which changed uh, so now again same thing we could create a new project for uh, sorry new release for ui project so let's do it uh, same idea so create new file test playground ui integration so let me commit it Same thing in a bit, this will trigger new action here. Okay, now it's faster, it's, it's already started. Let's see how it's going. So it takes a bit of time to download the client and do everything. Okay, so that's our new version, new release. So now if we go to Playground, and this time we go to UI project. So again, our new UI release is here. Wonderful. Let's check one more thing. So here we have a source code commit. Let's make sure it's the real one. So that's my commit. Let's check. Yeah, it's, it matches. So it gets the correct commit hash, streams it to realize a hub. Uh, this artifact is a mocked artifact, but essentially the SHA-256 is uh, the SHA of the directory of the UI project. So now let's look into products. So again, in products we have few predefined releases. And again, the easiest we can do is create a new product release manually. For this, we just need to click on Add Release. Again, the version is automatically generated for us uh, because we provided version schema. We click Submit and the new release is here. So now, because it's a product release, it may have some components. So to add components, we go into Release and we can add components manually from here. So let's pick our 
latest release of our backend project and now our UI project. So those are releases that we just created from GitHub Actions. And we may complete this release. So that's it. We have a new release, which is a combination of both. I'm going to show now how we can automate this. First of all, to get there, we need to discuss concepts of instances. So I'm clicking on instances and you can see we have three mock instances generated for us by Playground. So we have test, staging and production instances. Uh, we start with test. So as you can see, the system already assigned our product to this instance and the flag, the integrate flag is set to integrate. What this means is when new project releases appear on the instances, the instance will automatically create a new product release based on what it has on it. So let us now see how that works. So for this, again, we have a script in our GitHub project. Uh, so I'm not going to clone this project to my local and then launch a mock script from my local. So I'm going to use sigwin for that. And I do git clone. So here I now have my new project. And we can see there is a the sample instance script directly so i'm going in there and we can find two scripts in there one is request instance target and second is send instance data script so we're going to use send instance data and mock it so let's try to run the script Okay, so this is uh, the file ending problem that I have uh, because I'm using Windows system. So let me quickly fix that. So I just use external tool to fix the line ending issue. So let's try again running the script. Okay, so now it complains that it needs API ID and API key. So we go back to playground. Now we're in the instance. And now we need to generate API key and ID for the instance. So I'm clicking on the log icon here. So this would be our ID and key. So let me now add that information to the script. Okay. So now I do send instance data with ID and API key. Okay. Okay, so first thing the script is doing, it's pulling uh, realizer go client docker image. So this will take a bit of time. Uh, I thought I had latest on my system, but apparently we just updated it slightly. So it needs to pull it. And so now it sent the data and basically that's the response about the instance that it got. So let's now go back to the tool and see what we have here. So as we can see, we now have this project marked as deployed in the instance. It's just because we structured data such a way and we ship their hash codes for those artifacts uh, with our tool. And as you can see, it now generated a new product release for us, which has those two components. So this is how we can create releases automatically. And the reason it created a new release is because, again, we have the integration flag set to integrate. So now let's discuss what are other possibilities for uh, the flag. So we have staging instance where it's set to follow. Follow basically means that it retrieves the latest version of uh, product release that we have. And on production instance, we have set it to target, which means you can choose the release that, that you want. Uh, so let's say uh, let's say that we want to choose uh, 
some target release here let's say this one and now experience what it means for our production instance for this we have another script uh, this time it's called request instance target dot sh and uh, again if we run it like that uh, it requires api id and key so let me generate those for production instance so this would be our id and our key And so now it worked and what it gives me, it gives me the exact version of components that I need deployed on my instance, including digests and including uh, their artifacts. So if those are your Docker image from this, you know exactly which image to deploy and you can integrate this into your continuous delivery system. Uh, so once again, if you want specific product release here you set target and if you want just the latest available product release you set integrate option to follow uh, so this is the end of this tutorial just to sum things up we covered projects that you may have in your organizations and project releases uh, in playground we have just backend and ui then we have product and products are essentially compositions of products of projects and we discussed how you can automatically create releases for projects and products using integration feature on your instance and we covered the send instance data script which tells you at every point of time what are your deployed project releases and how they get integrated into product release and how then you can propagate this product release into other instances. Uh, last thing that I want to pay attention to is this uh, instance history feature. So everything that happens on your instance gets uh, audited, gets tracked. So for example, there was a deployment here. It means that we sent this instance data and you can click the view icon and see that there was a state change like there were no releases before this time. And after we send data, we got those two releases in here. So this is what the auditing functionality does. Uh, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation. If you have uh, any questions, uh, please either comment on this video or reach us out uh, on our Reddit channel, r slash Reliza. Uh, you can go to this playground website, playground.realizerhub.com, uh, play there. And once you're happy with it, you can move to a real production instance, which is realizerhub.com. And it's hosting live uh, public preview of our uh, Realizer Hub project. Thank you very much.